If you try to implement a search feature on your mobile application, the most common search engines that are suggested are Elasticsearch and Algolia. In today's video, I will briefly explain what Elasticsearch is and how to get it working for your Flutter application. Now I know you can't wait to see how this would work, but I'll appreciate if you would smash the like and subscribe button to support this content. So you want a search feature on your application, you pick Elasticsearch, but now you have to connect your Flutter application to Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an open source search engine. Think of it as a software or a service that helps you iterate through a bunch of data. Because it is open source, it is basically free. Well, if you're willing to host it on your computer. You can run Elasticsearch locally or on the Google Cloud platform. Because of the structure of this video, I will start up with the local setup and we would later take a look at Google Cloud hosting. Let us get started with the installation process. Go to the download link in the description to download Elasticsearch. I am using Windows so I would pick the Windows version of Elasticsearch. Choose your version according to your operating system. Go to your downloads folder and unzip the file. I would drag the unzipped file to my desktop for easy access. Next we open a terminal of our choice and use it to navigate to our Elasticsearch directory. Navigate till you see several folders. Next, we want to start Elasticsearch service by inputting bin forward slash elastic dot bat, which is a batch file. For macOS, you want to use bin forward slash Elasticsearch. This will take a couple of seconds and boom, we have Elasticsearch service running. Once it is done, go to the browser and run the local host endpoint that you can find in the terminal. You'll get some details about your Elasticsearch service. Note that closing the terminal ends the service. If you are already confused, let me explain the logic. We will host Elasticsearch locally for now. Since it is a service that is hosted live, we would be able to make some calls to its endpoint. An endpoint is essentially the location of a server. After all this, we will make a Flutter application and we would make those HTTP calls in our Flutter app. All we are doing is making calls to the Elasticsearch endpoint. For this, we would install a visualizer called Kibana. Kibana is a part of Elastic Stack that makes it easy to visualize your data. Link in the description for more details. Let's install Kibana quickly. Go to the link in the description below and download Kibana. Unzip the file and put it somewhere you desire. Open a new terminal and navigate to the Kibana folder until you see multiple folders. Open bean forward slash kibana dot bat or on macOS bean forward slash kibana and this will take some seconds to get done. Once this is done, you would see an endpoint. Take this link to your browser and run it. Now Kibana would visualize the Elasticsearch service you have running. Now that the setup is done, let us get to the fun part. Elasticsearch stores its data in something called an index and within an index, you can have different types. For example, in an index gender, we can have male and female types. Let us get started by creating our first index. We would use HTTP request methods to communicate with our Elasticsearch server. I would introduce the methods quickly, but the mindset is basic. The get method is for getting some information. The post and put methods are for sending or updating some information. The delete is to delete some information. Very simple. Using Kibana, go to the dev tools that you can find in the top left menu and in this console, we can visualize and play around with our request. Using the put request, we would create our first index and call it superhero. Every HTTP request has a response, and from the looks of it, our index was successfully created. If it wasn't, say you made a mistake, you would get an error. We can start creating our superhero data. Using the post command, we will create some hero data. Post Superman with a document type of the superhero index. Here you can see several base data types, string, name, int, age, and a list. As for the HTTP response, we see that we get details of our data. Our data is currently saved and we have an additional field which is the ID of the document. An ID is randomly generated every time we use the post command. We can give a specific ID by using the post command. This way we can have a unique ID for every data we create. Elasticsearch relies on using the JSON format for request and response. You'll see more as we go on. 
Now that we have some data, we can do a basic search by using the get method. Here we have a query and all we do is ask for a match of a certain word. Elasticsearch goes ahead and finds every hit in our Elasticsearch server and then spits them out with their scores and more information that we do not need to worry about right now. The last method would be the delete method and it deletes what you want. So to delete some information in an index, we just use the ID of that data. We can also delete specific types of data and we can also delete an entire index. There are other methods like head that lets us check if an index exists. Please read the Elasticsearch documentation. I would go ahead and create the Flutter app. It would be very basic. It would have a search bar that when you click on it, it would take you to the search delegate. Now let's start using the Flutter app to both input and get data from Elasticsearch. Right now you're thinking, how do we use HTTP methods in Dart? Well, we have an HTTP package in Flutter that would help us make HTTP requests to the internet. I would install the HTTP package into the project, but there is no need to do this since someone already did the hard work for us. The Elastic Clients package masks all the ugly HTTP requests and allows us to make requests using simple methods. You can take a look at the code in the Elastic Clients package on GitHub and edit it to fit your needs, or just read it to understand how it works. Take the Elastic Clients package and put it in your popspec.yaml file. Next, you can import the package at the top of your Dart file. With our Elasticsearch server running, let's connect to the local host endpoint and try to run this piece of code. All it is meant to do is use the HTTP package to visit the Elasticsearch endpoint and print out the body of the endpoint, which is just some information on our Elasticsearch server. Sadly, we get an error doing this because I am running the app on a physical device that does not recognize the local host endpoint. To fix this, we need to allow Elasticsearch run on a public IP that can be accessed using a physical phone. First, we want to close the Elasticsearch server that is running in the terminal using Ctrl C or Command C on Mac. Go back to the Elasticsearch documents that we downloaded earlier, navigate till you see multiple files, navigate to the config file and open the Elasticsearch.yaml file in an editor of your choice. In the YAML file, you want to uncomment the network.host key by removing the hashtag and change the value to 0.0.0.0. Scroll down and also change the discovery.seed underscore hosts key to an empty list. Save the file and you can close it. Restart Elasticsearch and you will see the new IP address in the terminal. Now we can access Elasticsearch through the local host and still access it through the IP address we get in the terminal. We can leave Kibana to run on the same port and address since we do not need it to be accessible on a physical device. This video explains more about accessing local host on a device if you need more information. Let's get back to our code and we can change the IP address to the one we got. Now we see that it prints what we expected. Let's start using the Elastic Clients package. First, we start an HTTP transport using the IP address. To create a new index in our application, we use the update index function. While the documentation on this package is not detailed, I can just read the code in the repository and understand what function to use. I advise you to also do the same if you run into any issues. Before we create a new index, let's check Kibana and you can see that we do not have an index called games. Let's create a new index and name it games using our Flutter application. Now we check Kibana and you can see that the index does exist now. To add some data to Elasticsearch, we use the update doc function. This function requires an index, a type, an ID, and a map of key value pairs. I would go ahead and create some documents and create more documents and create more documents and create even more documents. Now that we have a lot of data in our games index, we can start to create the search feature we desire. The Elastic Client package has a search function that requires an index, a type, and a map of key value pairs. Using my search delegate, I can search for pretty much anything I want. This is an example code and it will just search for our superheroes depending on the key value pairs you ask it to match. We can even have the search be in a particular order if we want. 
we can do literally anything we want. All the code will be on my GitHub in the description below. You will be able to see what the Flutter app is doing. Elasticsearch is really amazing. There is so much you can do with aliases, aggregation, searches that there is no way I can cover everything. But what I have done is provided you with a perfect blueprint to understand how Elasticsearch works and how you can further make your queries. This is the end of this part. In the next part, I will show you how to host Elasticsearch on the Google Cloud Platform and send Firebase data to Elasticsearch using Cloud Functions. If you would like to see more videos like this, do not forget to leave a comment below, like the video, share and please subscribe to the channel. Stay safe everyone.